Our next problem solving is matrix logic. We're going to review the rules and setup for this before we actually look at a sample problem. So first, always always read through the problem once thoroughly. Second, in matrix logic you need to determine how many categories or subjects exist in the story because this will help you set up your boxes and grids later. When you're reading clues, they're often given so that they only give information about two categories at a time. So when we start creating our boxes and grids, we need to create them for each pair of categories. And we'll go through that in a moment with some examples. When we create a box or a grid, we label the category and the details for the category. Additionally, there should always be a section for notes, and this will be for any clues that don't help you immediately, but may come in handy later. We use X's to cross out an option, and O's to show an answer. Once you enter an O, you can cross off all options connected to it horizontally and vertically. And then once your grid is filled in, don't forget to summarize your answer in writing. So let's look at some examples. If I'm reading a problem that has two categories, let's say the name of a set of boys and sports that they like to play. I would create one grid or box that's in the shape of a square, and I would label one side with the boys' names, and I would label the other side with the sports that they like to play. That's the category, and then I would enter all the names of the boys and all the names of the sports. And then I would close my square so that there are grids, just as I'm showing here. As I read a clue, if something eliminates an option, I can put an X. But if I discover an answer, then I put an O. And as I mentioned up above, when we enter an O, we can cross off all options connected to it horizontally and also vertically, as shown in this example. Now we may have a problem where there are three categories. Let's say boys, sports, and the day of the week that they play. So I create one grid for boys and sports. Okay, again, filling in the details, so the boys' names and the names of the sports. But I may get a clue that tells me what sport is played on which day. So I've got my sports here. I'm now going to create a box over here that would be the day of the week. So that if I get a clue that talks about the sports on the day of the week, it can go there. Now I've got sports and boys, and I've got sports and day, but I'm missing boys and day. So I'm going to draw another grid down here, and notice this one is also for day, but that will allow me to record any information that I find out about clues that deal with boys and day. So notice how this grid looks quite a bit different than one with two categories. Let's look in ex at an example now. Example one, family outing. Five families spent their weekends on different outings. From the clues below, determine which family did each activity. The Blancs bought new sleeping bags for their trip. Sherry White was scared of animals, so her family did not go to the zoo. Johnny Weiss and Ruby Miles both had a great time because they enjoyed doing things in water. And Rose Miles enjoyed telling Henry Blanc about her adventures on the raft. We can determine that there are family names and some kind of outing. Two categories. So we will draw a grid that has two categories showing the family name and the weekend activity. Notice that I've labeled the categories and the details. So now we read through the, the clues and we mark in the grid what we find out. The Blanc spot new sleeping bags for their trip. So I find the column that has the Blancs and if they have sleeping bags, we know they're not going water skiing, we know they're not going to the zoo, we know they're not going on a picnic, and we also know that they're not going river rafting. So I can determine that they're going to go camping. Remember once we add a zero in, we can cross off all the grids that are connected to it horizontally and vertically. The second clue says Sherry White was scared of animals, so her family did not go to the zoo. So I look at my column for the White family, and I cross off they didn't go to the zoo. 
Johnny Weiss and Ruby Miles both had a great time because they enjoyed doing things in water. So we've got the Weiss family here and the Miles family here. I know that they like doing things in water, which could be water skiing or river rafting. So I can cross off the zoo and I can cross off the picnic. Now there's something interesting that's occurred here. I see in the zoo row there's only one space left and if there's only one space left that must be a zero. And once I put in an O, remember that I cross off the other options horizontally and vertically. Okay, let's look at our last clue. Rose Miles enjoyed telling Henry Blanc about her adventures on the raft. So we know the Miles family went river rafting. Remember, I can use X's to cross off anything that's connected to it horizontally or vertically. And in my picnic row, I'm left with one spot, so I can add an O and fill in X's horizontally and vertically, and that leaves one last O. Remember that we always summarize our answer. So I would say that the Weiss family likes to go water skiing. I can say that the Blanc family likes to go camping. The Alba family went to the zoo. The White family went on a picnic. And finally the Miles family went river rafting. It's always helpful too to put a box around your answer so that I can find what I'm looking for. In this example problem, I did not need to have a special section called Notes, but in the next, next example, you'll see how it may come in handy.